Well, it is, a, it is a great joy for me to whenever I come back uh, to Second Baptist Church because what happens is, and I, I, you learn something every time you come here. Uh, as I was standing here, I, I do remember when uh, Dr. Young talked about this property, and uh, I remember seeing it when it was absolutely blank. What you have done is absolutely amazing here. Uh, it's absolutely incredible, and what a great, what a great blessing it is, and to see what God is doing uh, in your midst. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for Him, for this church, uh, for what He's meant. And I want you to understand something that that what you're doing now is absolutely amazing as a church. Uh, sometimes people think, well, that everybody's doing that. That's really not the 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 case in there. Every, everybody is different. But you've done an amazing task at this place. But Second Baptist Church, everywhere I go, uh, because people know of our, our friendship, they will ask me what, what is happening there. And every time it is something new and something that is different, something that is on the cutting edge, always to the glory of God and seeing people come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. But I would tell you, as I've told others before, that uh, if you look up the term cutting edge in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of your church because that's, that's what you are. You are the cutting edge for the kingdom of God. And uh, you, are, you are not only having an impact right now, even while you sit here, you're doing some great work around this country because of the reputation and the impact that this church has. So I'm just, I'm just delighted and honored to, to be here. It is a a great place, and uh, my wife and Laura and I talk about it uh, all the time of what that meant to uh, what it meant to us, and what it continues to mean to us and to our family. So I'm I just want you to know I'm honored to be here. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter one. On this Memorial Day, as Doctor Young has already said, we remember those who pay the ultimate price in order that we might have the freedom to do what we are doing now. We must never take that for granted. There is a, a tremendous challenge in our culture today to be what God would have us to be and to uh, seek to keep Him first. And Hebrews is written to a group of people that they had been persecuted. They were very much in the minority. They had been, uh, been abused. They had been... Uh, treated harshly, and to tell you the truth, many of them have talked about, about giving up. And the writer of Hebrews comes, and we really don't know who that was. It could have been one of several people, but he comes with a message that is packed with the gospel. It is dripping with the good news of Jesus Christ. And we see it at the very first of this letter. So we're going to look at that this morning to see what God has for us as we look to Him. Would you join me as we pray together? Father, how we are so grateful for what we've seen here already, for the, for the worship, for the music, for the attitude that is here. Lord, when you walk in this place, you know there's, there's something different to the glory of God, and we thank you for what is happening here week after week after week, and how the impact goes far beyond uh, this area, but to a, to a world that is lost and a world that is seeking to know the truth. So, Lord, as we look at your word today, we pray, dear God, that, that even though we may have seen it many times, it'll be like it's the very first time. And that, Lord, uh, we will take that and apply it to our lives because all of us are different. All of us have different challenges. And, Lord, we will be changed because of our relationship with you. I pray for those that need to know Christ as Savior, uh, for those that are dealing with struggles right now. God, may you use this. Lord, we pray that what may be so obvious is what you are doing in the hearts and lives of people. And I pray that I just might be out of the way in this and we might see what you want to do in our lives. And we entrust it to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're looking at um, 
at Hebrews chapter 1. And I'll tell you, there is so much stuff here. It only takes a couple of verses to see all that the Lord is doing. So it begins there. I'm going to begin with verse 1. And he says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world, and he is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. That is, he sat down at the right hand of God. This is a terrific passage. Now, in your life and in my life, we are all dealing with different challenges. There are no two people here that are exactly the same. Everybody is trying to deal with different things, whether it's in a relationship, a vocation, um, you're just going through the change of getting out of school, it's family, it's health, it's finance, it's all of these things. Everyone is different. And in most cases, we are encouraged to try to build our lives and And by the way, being citizens in the United States, we have the opportunity, we have a philosophy of of doing something better, of doing something more. All of us want more. We want more of something. We want more leisure time, or we want more assistance, more attention, more peace. We want more help. We want uh, more friends. We want more money. We want more of, of everything. That's just our, our nature as a culture. We may not talk about it constantly, but it is, it is certainly true, and we don't know how to deal with it. At the same time, when we're dealing with our challenges and the things that we're taking on, we sometimes get confused, and this is a place where this passage of Scripture becomes so great. There are several words here that we see a lot in Hebrews. You see the word better uh, about, I think it's 13 times in the book of Hebrews. You see the word perfect uh, 14 times in the book of Hebrews. You see over and over the word eternal in that. And God has put together a picture for us that that what we see in a walk with Jesus is better. It's better because of the blessings that are eternal. And it gives us a perfect stand before God. So yes, it's better. It's eternal, and it gives us a perfect standing for God. So there is, therefore, there is hope for all of us. Uh, no matter who you are, no matter what you experience now, there's hope for you and for me. Uh, now, I, I would be the first to tell you I couldn't understand that. In fact, if I were to speak to many of you today and say, tell me what's going on in your life, and you were to talk to me about the issues that you're facing, I'm going to tell you my response would be, Whew, man, I don't know what in the world I would do if I were in your circumstance. And I don't. And I, don't. I might give an opinion, but it would be absolutely worthless. You know, you just, we just deal with those situations and try to find out what the Lord is doing. But I also want you to know this. It is like we're in hundreds of different Worship, individual worship services right now because the Lord has a plan for you and your life. And he looks at you. He doesn't mistake you for anyone else. He looks at you and he is focused on you. That's one thing about the omnipresence of God that is so fabulous that he just focuses on you. And then he points this out and he gives a a list just in these couple of verses of seven things that would be a major encouragement. We're seeking for more. We're trying to deal with the situations. Look at what God has done for us there in verse 2. It says, he was appointed, first of all, heir of all things. He owns it all. There, There is no doubt who is in charge. He is the heir of God. That everything belongs to him. So therefore, there's not any situation that he cannot deal with. He can handle it. It may seem overwhelming to us, but when we are 
focusing on him, he makes a difference. So it says, first of all, that he is the heir of all things. He is not limited. Therefore, that means we are not without hope. And then he says, through whom also he made the world. Not only is he the heir, he is the creator. He brought it into being. He spoke it into being. He just brought it instantly into being. It's hard for us to to understand that, but he was the creator. It was not just an idea of of someone else. God used him as the creator that God created, not didn't use him, but God created uh, him. He also is, as the scripture says here, not only see the heir of all things, the creator, but then it says he is the revealer. It says he is the radiance of his glory. He's the light. That's not enough. Folks, the idea of, of radiance is a brightness that is beyond. It's like what they talked about in the Old Testament in the Shekinah glory in the temple. It is the, the light. It is the presence of God. Someone say that, says that the radiance here, that it is like comparing the rays of the sun to the sun. That's what you know what's happening because the, the light and the power, this is not a flashlight deal here. This is the radiance of God that you look into that. Now, we look at all the situations around us. Right now, we look at all the circumstances, and we would spend our time looking down around our lives at everything that's going on. But when we turn and we see the radiance of the Lord God in Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, those issues that we were dealing with are not so difficult They're not so hard. It is the radiance of um, his glory. The glory of God, we can't even describe it in that. And not only is it the radiance of his glory that he goes on and he says, also here you have the exact representation of his nature. That it is carved out, that we see who God is. In John chapter 14, verse 9 Jesus says, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. That's the picture of what this says. There's no possibility here of mistaken identity. Okay? When you look at Jesus, you look at God. You see him. He is that exact representation. He doesn't just favor him. He is that exact representation there. It is a a picture of something that is so clear and down to every detail. And he uses all of this to get to what I think for us is so very important. Because after he talks about him being the heir and the creator and the, and the, uh, the radiance that is there, the exact representation, look at what he says he does. It says there in verse 3, and upholds all things by the word of his power. It's hard for us to understand that because we think in terms of limitation. Everything that we know, everything that we see, whether it's a machine or whether it's a a philosophy or a person or an emotion, it has a limitation. But it says here that the Lord upholds everything in creation, all things, by the word of his power. That word upholds is a word that speaks to the the process of of picking up something. It would be like uh, if there was a a bowl on a table right here that we could pick it up and we could carry it over here and we could put it on on another table, that that's what he does. That's what he does with all of creation. Now, Now, I'll tell you, when we're dealing with our own personal circumstances, I think it's critical that we stay in touch with the power of the one that we're leaning on. I, I brought a, a piece of paper here. It's, this is just a plain piece of paper. But I want to use it as an example. I want you to think of this piece of paper, the thickness of this piece of paper, as if uh, this represents, this one piece of paper represents the distance from the earth to the sun, about 93 million miles. 
So when we look at this piece of paper, we're reminded that this is how far it is. It's 93 million miles from the earth to the sun. Now, if you were to decide that, well, how far is the nearest star? The nearest star, other than the sun, how far is the nearest star from us? And what you'd find is this. If you were to, to calculate that, those who had this illustration would say, you would have a pile of paper that would be 70 feet tall. Each sheet representing 93 million miles, that's about how far it is, to the nearest star in our galaxy, the nearest star to us. That's beyond our thinking. But take it a step further than that. How big is the galaxy in which we live? When, when we look out there, it just goes. We just can't understand the numbers. But if you were to take the diameter, go from one end to the other of our galaxy and... Uh, astronomers tell us that we're a relatively small galaxy out of many. But if you were to go from one side to the other in terms of distance, you would have then a pile of paper that would be 310 miles high. That's how big it is. And that's only in our galaxy. You're not even talking about getting outside and the rest of the universe. And here's what you need to understand, remember about that. He says, he upholds all in creation, all things, by the word of his power. So all that we say here, and the entire universe, it is as if he moves it with his little pinky. He just moves it, he picks it up. It's a picture, he picks it up, and he carries it where he wants it to go. Now, the great news, the great news about this is that the one who upholds all things with the power of his word can concentrate on all of that and focus on you right now at exactly the same time. And he doesn't mistake you. He doesn't mistake you for anyone else. He knows exactly who you are, and he knows exactly what is going on in your life and what you are facing at this moment in time. And so he sustains us. He upholds us. He strengthens us by the, by the word of his power. And then it goes on and says a couple of other things there. After he's done all this, then it talks about he is the, he is the redeemer. When he had made purification of sins. When he died on the cross for our sin. And he takes the blame for our sin. So that we might have the possibility of eternal life. He is the redeemer. He deals with it when no one else can. There is great news. Today folks. No matter what happens, no matter where you go in terms of a website, no matter what network you might listen to, no matter what paper or, or piece of uh, information you might try to chase down, let me tell you, there is hope because Jesus is the Redeemer. He is a Redeemer who makes the difference. And so we can focus on everything else and say, oh man, I don't know what we're going to do here. How is this going to work for us, for our family, for our city, for our state, for our country, for our world? But at the same time, he is the redeemer, the purification of our sin. And the last thing that he has in this passage of scripture is he says here that the last thing he does in verse three, it says, he sat down at the right hand of the mat the majesty on high. He sits down with the Lord God at the right hand of the Father. Because of his power and because of his omnipresence and his omniscience, because of what he has done for us on the cross, he sits down and he is focused on you and he is focused on me today. And they can be focused upon us. He is the mediator. He is the ruler. He is the one that is there to make a difference. And that makes a difference to us every day. So what that means that on this particular day, right now in this moment, 
that we have an opportunity here that God wants to touch our hearts and our lives in the midst of this. Jesus Christ makes all of the difference. I was um, reading recently uh, a woman who had taught in another ministry for a number of years ago, and she used to use this illustration, and she used to say that, you know, if you want me to come into your life, you say, and if I were to use my name, you want me to come into your house. You want me to come into your house, and, and my name is Mike Hamlet, and so therefore you want me to come into your house, but you look at me and say, I'll tell you what, I just, want, uh, I just want Mike in my house. I really don't want Mike Hamlet in my house. I only want Mike in my house. Or, or I only want Hamlet in my house. I don't want both. I only want one of the two. And that's not possible to us. When, when I come into a house, you have to have all of me. And that's what you want in Jesus Christ. You want all of him. You just don't want someone who is the, 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 the healing Jesus, the the, the helping Jesus, the, the loving Jesus, but you also want the Jesus that reigns. You want the Jesus that understands, the one that creates and the one that, that rules and the one that upholds. We have the opportunity to have everything that God holds for us. We have the opportunity not just to have part of that, but to have everything. And so now these Hebrew Christians that are trying to figure out, you know, what in the world are we going to do? The writer of Hebrews comes and says, let me tell you something, folks. There's so much going on here, it's hard for you to keep up with. And that we need to understand in our lives, as it says here in the Scripture, that we have all of those things, that we can be in connection with the heir of everything, with the Creator, with with the one who is the radiance. We won't ever be lost in the dark because of his radiance, the exact representation. There'll never be a mistaken identity there that we will have someone who will uphold all things by the word of his power because he is our redeemer and he is our mediator. Ladies and gentlemen, great news. He is available. We simply have to say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Know that you died on the cross for my sin. We must deal with the Lord Jesus Christ personally. That's why what we have going on here are literally hundreds of different services because God focuses on us. And while we're running around saying, I just want more of this and I want more of that, the answer for you and for me, as it says here, and he said to the Hebrews, is to focus on on him, deal with him, and trust him, because that is what ultimately makes all the difference. Let's pray together. Lord, as we come before you today, thank you, dear God, that we can see the truth. See what you want to do in and through our lives. How grateful we are for your love for us. How grateful we are for the opportunity we have. Lord, may we now take advantage of that opportunity and use the life that you've given us to make a difference because it must be centered on you. Lord, help us to make the decisions we need to make, go in the directions we need to go, which leads us to this one who has done so much for us We'll give him all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name.